Good evening friends and welcome to this week's video. As you can see by the title already, this week I thought I would cover 10 things I wish I knew before I became an airline pilot. I've been getting a few questions around this, so I thought I'd create a video on it and just list top 10. Let's get into it. So for those of you that are new here, welcome. My name is Nick Priest. I'm currently a first officer on the Airbus 320 here in Melbourne, Australia. Before this, I was a second officer on the Boeing 787, so I've done some international and now domestic flying as well. Some of these will relate mainly to international and mainly domestic, but some of them will obviously overlap as well. And I'd just like to preface this by saying, obviously any job is going to have pros and cons, and this is just my personal list. Obviously everyone is gonna have their own opinions and views on this, uh, but these are just my top 10 things I wish I knew. The first one being there is no routine, like there are no Monday to Fridays and weekends off. Your schedule changes every month, or there is next to no routine. So every month you'll get a new roster, your days off will change every month. Obviously with each company and each roster, preferences and what you can change and bid for around that will change with every airline. You can bid to have certain set days off. So you could bid to have say every Monday and Tuesday off, and then most likely you'll get shifts from Wednesday to Sunday. International is a little bit different. Obviously, if you are going away for a set amount of time, you can obviously bid for say a trip that would leave on Monday or Tuesday, maybe have you back by Thursday, or Friday, and if you want to try and obviously maximize the amount of weekends you have at home and things like that. But that obviously is not going to be the case every single month. Every month that's going to change. Routine is very hard to come by, but this is not a Monday to Friday weekends off type job. Number two, planning your meals and when you eat is challenging. This probably mainly relates more to domestic because uh, international, there are quite long flights obviously and in the cruise, you have quite a bit of time obviously to eat. But domestic, obviously going from say Melbourne to Sydney, uh, it's a pretty quick flight. Obviously you're on climb, very short cruise and then you're on your descent and preparing for the approach and everything like that. So you kind of have to plan when you're going to eat your meals, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner. But in saying that, preparation is just key. So preparing your meals for the week or the night before, um, it is doable, uh, but it's just challenging. So this is more domestic, but if you have four short sectors, for example, you just wanna have meals ready that you can eat quickly and prepare quickly, rather than say probably a hot meal that you're gonna heat up if you were doing like a Melbourne Darwin or Melbourne Perth, uh, for example. Obviously, this is in Australia. This is why I'm doing Australian examples, but obviously America and Europe and everywhere else like that, it's all gonna be different. Number three, maintaining your sleep schedule or routine is hard work. It is something you do have to work on. Obviously, you can bid for, say, mornings or evening shifts, which could result in you doing overnights or back-of-the-clock flights, which are basically through-the-night flights. So, you know, starting on at 10 or 11 p.m. and then getting home at 5 or 6, 7 a.m., something like that. But similar to the first point, your schedule changes every month. So your sleep routine, you are going to have to adjust to. So when I flew on the wide body doing international flights, they were mainly through the night or back of the clock flights, meaning you'd sign on at 4 or 5 p.m. and then fly for another 10, 11 hours. So for those, for example, for me, the night before I would stay up as late as I could and then sleep as long as I could the morning of, whereas some people, you know, would go to bed at a semi-normal time, get up at a semi-normal time, and then nap in the afternoon before they sign on. Similar to domestic, if you are doing back of the clock, or night flights, same thing will work. But like me right now, domestic, I bid for morning shifts, which is what me and M bid for, to try and match up our shifts as best as possible. So then we obviously have to get eight hours of sleep the night before, or well, best to get eight hours of sleep the night before. So we go to bed at a certain time, and then obviously get up for that. Then obviously each day that could change by one or two hours, so you just have to really focus on your sleep schedule and your routine. And again, this is achievable, it just takes work and requires discipline to make sure your sleep is a priority. Number four, maintaining a workout routine is possible but does require discipline. Similar to number three with the sleep schedule, obviously working out and maintaining a workout routine is possible. I have showcased this probably throughout my channel or tried to showcase this throughout my channel. For me, traveling international was just one of the first things I wanted to do when I woke up and just made sure I got my workout in for the day as well as obviously wake me up. But domestic, obviously that has changed because now I can access my local gym. Obviously once the coronavirus situation is over and we kind of go back to the normal life, but for me right now, doing domestic and doing morning shifts primarily, I like to do my workout straight after I finish work. I obviously have my pre-workout, which then will wear off by the time I have to go to bed that night for my shift the next day. And on the other hand, if I have a late shift or a back of the clock shift, I'll do my workout before. Uh, not obviously the first thing I do when I get home in the morning at 6 or 7 a.m. Just all depends. So obviously maintaining a workout routine is possible, but it does require discipline. Number five, it's not just an hourly salary. 
Obviously this will change airline to airline, obviously on your annual salary and what your base pay is, but it's not just your hourly rate. For example, obviously if you get an overnight or layover, you will then get allowances on top of your base salary, which is where you get a certain amount of money each night you are away from home. And then there are variations on that. So where you go internationally, the overnight allowance will change. And then obviously within your country or your home country, uh, that allowance will potentially change as well. And then each meal, so if you're away for a breakfast, you get the allowance money for that meal. If you're away for lunch and dinner, obviously you get that money as well. So those are all different factors. And then obviously there are things like minimum monthly pay. So no matter how many hours you fly for the month, there is a minimum set amount of hours that you'll get paid for no matter what. If you go over that, then you get paid an overtime rate, which is even more money on top of that. If you have to PAX or deadhead somewhere for work, you know, if you have to PAX from Melbourne to Sydney, you get paid a different rate to what you're getting paid if you were flying. So there are a whole lot of variations and each company will have their own, uh, whether you're on an EBA or if you're on a contract, everything will change around that. So whatever company you're going for, just be aware of that. Number six, sports and hobbies and joining a team. Be aware that you won't be at every game or it'll be very unlikely that you'll be at every game. Obviously it is still possible to join a team and play your favorite sports as long as you are aware that anything could happen. Obviously um, if you are away and then a flight is canceled or delay, you may not get home. Similarly, if you're on standby, anything could change. It is obviously possible to maintain being part of a sport team and it is healthy to do so, but you just have to be aware that it's not going to be as easy as if you were in say a nine to five type job or a Monday to Friday type job and it's probably not gonna be as easy as it was before you were an airline pilot. Number seven, be open and flexible to change. I briefly touched on this in the last point, but every day something new will happen, meaning that you could be rusted to fly four sectors for the day, then one of them gets canceled or a few of them get canceled, or on the first sector, you end up in a port where you have an engineering problem and then there's a delay, which obviously takes effect for the rest of your day, then may mean that you get home obviously quite a few hours later than what you were originally planning, or you may not even get home that night at all, depending on obviously the issue. Similarly with international, if you're overnighting in a destination and the plane that is leaving your home base to then obviously come get you and you're flying that plane home is delayed or has an injury problem then obviously you may end up with another night or another few nights in that destination away from home or it may just be a few hour delay and then also on top of that you will have standby days typically on your roster so anything could happen obviously on those standby days if those standby days are before a trip your whole trip could change or if it's just one day of standby obviously you can't make plans on that day uh, really because obviously at any point you get called out and then only have a few hours to get to the airport to fly so you just have to be open and flexible to change number eight be aware of your mental health probably a lot of people don't actually talk about this and yes while it is awesome obviously especially international uh, going to different destinations and exploring those destinations uh, sometimes they can be quite lonely obviously in a hotel room by yourself if you are with crew obviously that don't want to meet up or anything obviously you're on the other side of the world so you are exploring those places by yourself or if you don't feel like exploring, you're obviously in the room all isolated by yourself. So be aware of that and stay connected with obviously friends and family back at home. Um, FaceTime is an awesome thing as well, obviously, you know, just catching up with people, but you just have to be aware of it. And obviously if you're in a different country, you're in a different time zone, that may be different to obviously your friends and family back at home, so it may be hard to stay in touch. But yeah, just be being aware of that and just making sure you take care of your mental health and reaching out or talking to someone if need be. So number nine, how much study you will continue to do once you get the job, not just heaps of study, obviously through your getting your PPL and CPL, and then obviously studying, preparing to get the job in interviews, but there will be a lot of study to continue Continue to do once you have the job. With an airline pilot, you will have a SIM uh, recency check every six months. Uh, so obviously studying, preparing for that, and you have an annual line check as well. So that's at least three checks you'll have just flying wise um, for the year. And every year there are emergency procedure exams as well. And obviously depending on your airline, if they run tech refresher and human factor courses as well, which may sound like a lot, but especially in Sims, they do focus on training as well. So building up new skills and enhancing your current skills. So it is obviously a job that will challenge you and keep you mentally stimulated as well, which is obviously not a bad thing, but just be prepared to continue to do study throughout your career and enjoy the journey. And finally, number 10, a full day of airline pilot flying can be tough work. As I said earlier on in the video, flying domestic may mean flying four sectors for the day and may mean you fly to four different cities. So four different approaches, four different weather scenarios to deal with. And in that there may also be crew changes as well. So you may have two sectors, one captain, two sectors with a different captain for the day. So just be prepared for change as I kind of said in a previous point, but in saying that, 
can be tough work, but it is an awesome and rewarding job. But I don't want this to freak you out. You will get trained for these different scenarios and there will be a lot of training, obviously, throughout your career. And it's a very, very rewarding job. In my opinion, the best job in the world, getting paid to fly aircraft for a living is unreal. So if this video has given you guys a bit more insight into what it is to be an airline pilot, if you guys do have any more questions, please comment them down below. And as always, I will be active in the comments replying to you guys as well. So if you are new here and you've made it all the way to the end, please hit that subscribe button for me and you'll be the first to be notified when a new video does come out. And if you did like it, hit that like button for me as well. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all the support. Really appreciate it. Hope you guys stay safe and we'll see you guys next week.